Hi everybody, my name is Raj Singh and I'm a product manager at InterSystems. And I'm going to quickly show you how to set up InterSystems Iris as the backend database for a Python Flask application. Now this is actually really simple. In theory, basically you're writing a Python Flask application as you always would. But in, instead of hooking it up to uh, some other database, you are hooking it up to InterSystems Iris via a Python ODBC connection. And your communication with the database is done through SQL statements. So, if you saw my uh, tutorial presentation from Friday night, you saw a uh, Python application that used an ODBC connection, <coughs> and it used a configuration file that was sitting on uh, disk, connection.config, to pull in the authentication settings. So we do the same thing in the Flask app. Um, the first thing we do in our Flask app here, it's all methods except for down here, we have this run command, which calls the run method, which pulls uh, the important configuration information out of that connection file uses pyodbc.connect to make a connection to the database and we are ready to go. We're going to use that connection throughout so that's why this is a global variable which was defined up here. <coughs> so in the case of whenever we want to um, connect to the database and run a SQL statement we'll just open a cursor on this connection. So let's run through a little, let's make some APIs. First of all, the simplest one, well first of all, let's run our server. So I'm going to go to open up a terminal window here in Visual Studio Code. So I have this file irisflask.py. It is sitting in this directory here where I am. And you can see it right here, irisflask.py. Uh, I also have a little shell script here, runflask.sh. I'll show you that. All we're going to do is export Flask ENV to development, so we'll be running it in debugging mode. Um, the, the app is irisflask.py in that file, and then we're going to run. So the first thing we'll do here is set up the app, that variable as uh, Flask. And there's my little connection thing. Everything else happens in roots, which are relevant to the, or pertain to the APIs. So let's run this thing by running my run flask script. See, we start up on localhost colon 5000. So the first route, here's how you make routes in uh, Flask. First of all, a route defines the public internet URL <coughs> which somebody which somebody calls to get to your server and then your server decides what to do with that request they either you can either fulfill that right there in a, in the method or you can call out to any file you could even call out to another web service to get some intermediate response you need to fulfill the request so let's go through the simplest to the more complicated first one we have is what happens when somebody hits just the home page basically slash we're just going to return hello world very simple so let's go to let's just go to this URL paste that in there boom we get a hello world return next one so the default method is get this would only respond to a get request not a post request <coughs> the next route I'm going to define explicitly says we only accept the get method but that's the default so I didn't have to do that but this route is when somebody adds make schema to the end of that URL we're going to call we're going to run the code in in uh, this make schema function and in case you don't know about decorators in Python this app.route decorator applies to this function here whatever comes right after it so what we're going to do here is we are going to use that connection, get a cursor to it, run this SQL, or just a little simple SQL create statement. 
with a few fields on it, user ID, first name, and last name. We execute the SQL with the cursor.execute command, and then commit. Uh, and let's run that. And if everything is good, we'll return successfully created flask.sample table. So we do that. Oh, we get an error there. What happened? Let's see. Our doc I know what our error is. That table already exists. So let's delete it. just-in-time coding. So now, well, this is a good example. Now when we run that same API call, we get the successful return. So next, let's see how we do a POST request. In REST APIs, um, I kind of violated it there. GET request should not change any anything on the server. I actually changed, made a big time change. I created a table. That should have probably been a POST request. But in this case, uh, we'll ignore that for, for now. Now we're going to call another route called load data, <coughs> which will ask the server to populate that table with data. Um, this is a post request, so I can't do it from a web browser. I have to do it from another type of client, which supports post. And I will use curl. Very simple. So I'm going to curl content type text plane and I'm going to send minus x post. Here's my URL here. I'm going to post to localhost colon 5000 slash load data. And what I'm going to post is this file here, sample data.csv. And I will show you that briefly. It's just a little pipe separated file <coughs> with three items between each pipe, uh, user ID, a first name, and a last name. User ID, first name, last name, user ID, first name, last name. So when I run this command, okay, I get back response successfully certain inserted data into flask.sample. So what happened there was, pull in the data, we get it with the request.getData uh, flask, flask operation. We split the data by the pipe symbol into three different, three different items in a list. And then we iterate through that list and run SQL insert commands to put that data into the database. And then finally, after we do all three, we commit. We commit the whole operation at once. So the important things to know here is that if you define the method post, then you can, you are telling your method that you should look for data in the request object. That's important. The last thing I'm going to show is the way that you can add a variable to your parameter. So let's open the sample data. So I'm, I'm going to query by first name. We have three first names here, Raj, Michael, and James. You can look at this code later. Um, but I am going to just run it. So let's see, get by first name. The URL path is person slash and then some name. By putting these less than and greater than symbols in here, Flask knows that that's a variable and it's going to pull out. So I'll query for Raj. I do a little, I run a SQL query here. Select star from Flask.sample where first name like, whatever this variable was. So any variable here in the app in the uh, app decorator, app out route decorator, gets converted into a variable in this function. So that's how I got Raj from the URL here into my server and into the function. So that query was successful because there was a name, Raj, and I just do a little fancy stuff to convert it into JSON and send it back along with the original query that was run. Let me just show you that that actually is a variable, not hard-coded hard by searching for somebody else's name. Oops. 
James. And I get back James ID3, James Schultz. So that is a quick little example of how to do Python Flask with Intersystems Iris. Should be very familiar, just like any other database pretty much that you would work with SQL. So thanks and have a great hack.